is salvation. There's no other name. He is our faith. He's our shield of faith. He is truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said. He is the gospel. He is salvation. There's no other name. He is the shield of faith. Welcome to The Light of Truth. We are so glad that you joined us. God is doing amazing things here at the Lighthouse Family Worship Center. And you today have chosen to be a part of it, and we are so grateful. Now, I want you to receive everything that God has for you today. It's going to be amazing. The Word of God is about to transform your life. Now, remember, don't just hear it today. Apply it to your life. Be a doer of the Word. God bless you. I'll be back with you just a little bit. God sent me. Uh, from Deer Camp, four words. That was what the Lord spoke to me. The destroyer is destroyed. <coughs> and sometimes uh, we think we know what God is saying. Uh -huh. Have you ever done that? God speaks a word, you think you understand, and six months later you're going, well, he must not have meant that. See, Adam and Eve did it. God told them, if the day you eat the fruit, you'll die. And they ate it, they didn't die in their mind. But how many of you know you can look at the world today and say, hey, God's plan was killed that day. God's plan died. And so just because you don't think God knows what He's talking about, He absolutely knows what He's talking about. He has never made a mistake. And so when God says the enemy is destroyed, obviously he is not talking about the enemy, the destroyer being disintegrated and, and blown away like dust. Obviously that's not what he's talking about because we all know we face opposition. There is warfare. There is a real devil. He hates you. The bullets are real. And he's playing for keeps. You all know people that the enemy has pulled into his camp. People that used to walk with God. But they're not walking with him now because the warfare was so intense, whether it was a divorce or a loss of job or a death in the family, some kind of catastrophe threw them off track. And a good friend of mine, preacher of the gospel, one of the most powerful preachers I've ever listened to in my life, Walked in signs and wonders. I'm talking word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Amazing miracles. Cancer's gone. Heart disease gone. Diabetes gone. And, and, and had a little baby. Just a little bitty baby. Baby got sick. Within 24 hours, the baby died. Now he and his wife are divorced. He is not preaching. I don't even think he's in church anymore. So there is a reality that the enemy is, is, is real. Right. What God is saying is that you have absolute authority. Absolute authority. Jesus said, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall harm you. That's a promise that Jesus has given us. But we, you know, it, it, here's the word of the Lord. Walk ye in it. You've got to walk in what God says. And when you don't walk in what God says, you need to be crying out for mercy every day. Then get up, dust yourself off, and get back in the fight. The most dangerous thing you can do is turn your back on the devil. James 4 and 6, this is, this is a key verse in this study, but He gives us more grace. That is why the Scripture says, God opposes the proud, but He shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You submit yourself to God. You humble yourself before God. Have mercy on me, God. Give me grace, God. Help me, God. I need you, God. You're, you're literally living your life in submission to him. He said, when you do that and the enemy comes, you speak, and he has to go. 
You fight him. You don't give in to him. We have a tendency to resist temptation and run from the devil. Well, that's backwards. The Bible says flee temptation. See, that's what gets so many Christians in trouble. They just try to hold temptation to bay. The Bible says run from it. You're only to fight the devil. See, if you are indeed God's slave, the victory is won. Jesus has paid the price. You are redeemed. Psalm 149 and 4 says, For the Lord takes delight in His people. He crowns the humble with victory. Amen. We talked about it last week. We talked about it Wednesday night. There is a sound of victory. When, when David killed Goliath, David being a type of Christ, Goliath being a type of sin, David conquered sin. Jesus conquered sin. Jesus conquered the enemy. And when he did, Israel, they, they knew the victory was won. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 47 and 1 says, Oh, clap your hands, all you people, shout unto God. With the voice of triumph. What does the voice of triumph sound like? I told you this is going, we're, we're going to go at this for a while. This is not, you know, this is not something that we're going to, to hurry at because I believe with all my heart this is something that God wants to get through to us. He wants us to walk in this. Victory belongs to us. I've told you so many times, and I'm going to keep telling you. That God, if God has called you to something huge, and I believe it, I believe this place and all the people that God is going to send out from here. There's people in here right now, you're going to pastor churches, you're going to be missionaries, you're going to go around the world preaching the gospel. There's people God's going to raise up out of here to sing to the nations. It's going to happen. And in order for that to happen, you have got to be broken. Uh, Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness. Uh, Joseph spent time in, in, in prison and the pit. Uh, David ran from Saul. Some say 25 years from the time Samuel anointed David as king until he rightfully sat upon the throne. Some 25 years before he obtained the promise. I'm telling you, there were times in David's life he was going like, Where are you, Lord? I mean, he's anointed king and he's got people trying to kill him. Living in the land of the enemy. He took up refuge in the land of the Philistines. Because he was so hated in his own country. If God is going to use you, you have got to know you're not going to quit. Because I'm going to tell you straight up, when God begins to use you, it will be much harder then than it is now. I've had, I don't know how many people tell me, I've had people come to me and say, Brother Barry, this, I, this church, it's just so hard to come to this church. I've had people come to me and say, you tell me, because we love the church, we love the worship, we love the preaching, we love what God is doing here, but ever since we started coming, it's like all oh, hell has come against us. You tell us when hell backs up and we're coming back. I wanted to say, you are a total moron. You don't understand spirit, spiritual principles at all. I didn't. I just said, honey, it ain't never going to happen. It's going to intensify. The adversary is going to grow more fierce. And so am I. Amen. I'm going to meet his force with greater force. Because the greater one lives in me. I can't be me, and neither can you. The trouble is, we want our flesh to be comfortable, and you need to kill that stinking mess. And start living by the Holy Ghost. Live by the Spirit. There is a sound of victory. There is a sound of victory. If we know the 
victory's won. The Israelites knew it. David threw the rock. The rock found its mark. Goliath fell. David ran over, took his sword, and cut his head off. Amen. I'm telling you, that's powerful. When, when a little shepherd boy cuts off the enemy's head with his own sword. Probably a sermon right there, but I'm not going to preach it this morning. The people of Israel, they knew the victory was won. There was a sound of victory. Yes! Amen. 30,000, 20,000, 15,000 men screaming, shouting in victory. See, we can think when we hear the word, there is a sound of victory. We, think, we can think we know what God is talking about. I did. And he told me this morning what he was really saying. And then, don't get me wrong, we need to shout. We shake hell when we shout. There is something very important about a shout. I told you about Azusa. They shouted until the stage collapsed. And then they just kept shouting. Everybody climbed out of the wreckage. No one was hurt. And they started shouting again. And they shouted all night long. Just want to take a moment to invite you to our website, lfwc.us. God is doing some awesome things here at the Lighthouse, and we want you to know about all of them. Our fall semester of our Bible college has started, so that is going amazing. We're so excited about our, our new freshmen and our sophomores. I'm telling you, it's exciting what God is doing, and we want you to know more about that. Also, our Child Enrichment Center is going on. You can get all the sermons. You can listen to them on audio. Or if you'd like to request them, we will mail them to you totally free of charge. Um, also, you can get DVDs. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss out on anything. Now, a lot of times with the Light of Truth, you don't get the whole entire sermon. So you want to be sure and join us on the website so that you can get the full sermon, every bit of it. You don't want to miss out on any of it. Also, if you would like to partner with us, we want you to pray about that and you get all the information on the website about partnering. I'm telling you, God is doing amazing things and we're so grateful that you've, you've decided to take part in it. We're excited and so we want to know more about you. So just email us, um, come join us on the website, send us your prayer requests. I'm telling you, we are a church that believes in the power of prayer. God answers prayer. There's nothing impossible for our God if we'll just cry out to Him and believe Him as we join in prayer. So now I'm going to send you back to the Word. God bless you. We'll be back in a minute to pray. How are you going to talk when you know the battle is won? Well, I'm telling you what, that kid of mine, they're on dope. Sometimes I think they are dope. Is, is that a sound of victory? I'm telling you, that stupid boss of mine, how they ever became my boss is beyond me. I'm ten times smarter than they are, more educated. I'm doing this company a lot better work than they are. So is, is your boss your source or is... I'm telling you what, there's some people in this church, they get under my hide. <laughs> you see that? They wore a hat in the sanctuary. Frankly, <laughs> God. Dear God, what's wrong with these people?
these people are out of order. They're out of order. They're out of order. Do you hear them speaking in tongues? What does victory sound like? Oh, Lord, here he goes again. If he could ever preach a 15-minute sermon, the world would stop. There has never been a sermon preached in 15 minutes. Maybe... I don't know what you'd call it, a sermonette for Christianettes. Uh, what, 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 devotion? John Wesley, after he had been kicked out of almost every church in England, he would preach. The deacons would hold a meeting and they would take record that John Wesley will never preach in this church again. He went into a field and a farmer turned a mean bull loose in the field and run all the people out. And this went on for week after week after week after week. But in his diary, some months later, we read of John Wesley out outside. He couldn't preach in a church. Have you ever heard of John Wesley? No one would allow him into their church. He was outside. 15,000 people gathered to hear what he was saying. And he preached for four hours. He preached three hours on the judgment of God and the horrific power of sin in the lives of people. He preached the danger and the damage that was coming in their lives if they refused to repent and serve God. And then he preached one hour on the cross of Jesus Christ and the resurrection. And after four hours, it is reliably reported that over 1,600 people were unconscious on the ground under the power of the Holy Ghost. No one prayed for them. No one touched them except the Holy Ghost. Jesus receives all that will come to him and say, have mercy on me, God. Have mercy on me, God. And receive the power of his cross and believe what he has done and believe that God is for them and believe that God wants to change their life and believe that God wants to change their circumstance. He turns no one away. But all those people that think they're already there, all the deacons in England, the Pharisees in Jesus' day, the people that gripe and murmur and complain about everything. See, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what's adjusted. See, we can cave in to every spirit that tries to rise up in this church and say, you know, you just need to turn it down a little bit. You know, you just need to tone it down a little bit. You know, you just need to shorten those sermons a little bit. I had a woman at one point in the ministry here and she got so mad at me because I refused to cow down to an evil spirit that kept coming up to me. At one point, it walked down the aisle of this building. We're building it. And he, he's got his arm in mine like he's my friend. And he's going, he's going, you know what? We never want this church to grow above 150 people. Because if it grows above 150 people, we're just going to lose so much. And I, I almost said his name. I said, I'm going to tell you something. What do we tell the 151st that wants to come in here and get saved? What do we tell the 151st that wants to come in here and, and get healed? I'm going to tell you something. It's not about numbers. I, we never, we're not at 150 now. I don't know what God is going to do. That's none of my business. Right. But I'm not going to cow to some spirit that comes with these 
these hateful, mean attitudes, trying to tell the, the, the servant of God how the church ought to be. He got mad and left. And this woman got so angry at me because they were good friends. See, it, it wasn't him. It's the spirit that was motivating him. You can't, you can't cow down to spirits. They don't understand that. See, if you see it, it's happening in our nation right now. The, the spirits behind radical Islam are devils. I'm not, in the, I'm not being mean, it's just the truth. It's not God that's strapping bombs on people and going among women and children and detonating themselves and killing innocent people. Those are devils. And, and our current administration doesn't understand it, obviously, because they keep capitulating to them. They keep cowing to them. They keep telling us if we, if, we, if we come against them too hard, they're just going to get worse. No, when you cow down to them, they see that as a sign of weakness. The only thing these spirits understand is overwhelming strength. They don't understand anything else. And so we've got to face these things with power and authority and strength. Doesn't matter Amen. if it's spirits of Islam or just an old gripey, complaining spirit in the church. Right. You gripe about your kids, you gripe about your marriage, you gripe about money, you gripe about politics, you gripe about everything. Is that the sound of victory? Do you really believe Jesus has won the victory for me? And God knows every moment of every second of every day that I live in. He knows when a sparrow falls to the ground. And he said that I am of much more value than many sparrows. God knows everything I'm going through. He everything I'm dealing with. He's working on me in the midst of every trial. He's transforming me in the midst of every situation. Do I resist the devil? Absolutely. Do I count to him in any way? Absolutely not. But I trust God because the victory belongs to me. The devil's not going to win. I am. Because if God is for me, who can be against me? See, we say we want our children saved. What does the sound of victory sound like? Praise God! My kids are saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. But they're really not, Pastor Barry. Yes, they are. Because according to the Word of God, if you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your household shall be saved. The Word of God declares, great shall be the peace of your children, and they shall be greatly taught of the Lord. The Bible declares that no weapon that is formed against us shall be able to prosper. Well, if you believe Jesus has won all this, then there needs to be a different sound coming out your mouth. Isn't it amazing when God speaks to you? I'm telling you, I love the Word of God. I love when God deals with me about things. I hope that today 
that you turned in, tuned in with a heart to receive, no matter how God deals with you. See, we need to be at that place in our life where we will say, God, examine me. God, do a work in my heart. David said, Father, search my heart. And that's what we need to be and be like every day of our life. God, search my heart. We need to understand that the enemy can move in and we not even realize it. But if we will just cry out to God, if we will be a humble servant saying, God, just search my heart. Show me anything in my life that is not pleasing to you, God, and get rid of it in Jesus' name. God will do it. See, when you pray that prayer, get ready. Because if you're a child of God, and, and I mean, if you're a child of God, if you've received Jesus in your heart, if you've asked him to forgive you of your sin, if you've made him Lord of your life, when you pray, he hears you. And so if you have that prayer today, God, just search my heart. God, do whatever you need to do in my life. God, show me anything in my life that's not pleasing to you. Get ready. He'll show you. And then allow him to do the work in your life. See, we are not alone. He wants to help us. He wants to guide us. He wants to direct us. Every See, we follow him. He doesn't follow us. He's the one who's leading us. And he will lead us into all truth. He's an amazing God, and He loves you today. you got to get a hold of that. I pray right now that every lie of the enemy would be destroyed and that you would receive the love of Christ right there where you're at. Let all the lies that the enemy has been lying to you, all those wrong thoughts, all those attacks in your mind, I just come against them right now in the name of Jesus, and I speak truth, I speak hope, I speak healing. God, I thank you right now for what you're doing in that heart right now. It's like I can see you right now just broken before God. And God is saying, through me today, receive it. I love you. He loves you. He loves you. You are not a failure. He has a plan for your life. Receive it today. Don't believe the lies anymore. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, let every lie be broken right now in the name of Jesus. And let the truth come forth right now. Lord, I break every lie of the enemy in Jesus' name. And God, I thank you right now for deliverance to that one right now that is in just such bondage. I speak freedom in the name of Jesus. God, thank you, Lord, for setting them free. And we give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God is incredible. Remember, he, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you. Receive it today in Jesus' name. Come join us next time. Remember, we're here every Wednesday at 7 a.m., every Saturday night at midnight. Visit us on the website, lfwc.us. God bless you.